three hours ago from a 22 hours flight, I didn't know I'd get an opportunity to speak. So I'm really grateful to be here. I come from Uganda, a very beautiful country, but with very oppressive laws. Currently in my country, these are the laws criminalizing homosexuals. As you can see, it's life imprisonment. But three years ago, the government felt it was very weak a law, and now they are discussing in the parliament a death penalty for homosexuals. Even just your parent or teachers or your sisters, if they fail to report you to the authorities within 24 hours, you face jail terms. But we said, you claim there are no homosexuals in Uganda. Why are you proposing these laws? We came out to the public and told them to let us live in peace. This did not go down well with the authorities. Political leaders, religious leaders, masses, demonstrations against us. Why? Because we are simply different from them. Because they feel we are breaking the status quo. We are supposed to all be the same according to them. This, of course, did not go down well with my community. We began facing arrests, as you can see and being dragged away with officials. And even early this year, my organization organized a skills building workshop for my community to empower ourselves to know how we can really live in a hostile environment. And I was threatened with arrest. I escaped, and up to now, I'm still battling in court against the government because I'm telling them I've done nothing for simply loving someone else. I'm an adult of sound mind. I'm not the only one facing this. Yesterday, before I boarded my flight, one of my colleagues was arrested, undressed, shown on TV, beaten, and there was a whole community waiting outside the police station to burn him alive simply because he's gay. There's media witch hunt in my country. Very many media houses have come out writing such about us. Two years ago, one newspaper came out calling for the hanging of all homosexuals. And indeed, my colleague who was put on the front page of that newspaper was murdered early last year in his house. And the government was the very first to come out and say it was not a hate crime. And they did not hold this tabloid accountable. We've been told to immigrate. We've seen such demonstrations, but we've also stood ground and felt proud of who we are. We wear our rainbows and stand on the streets and say we are proud of who we are. We are not ashamed. We have parents who have come out to petition the parliament, telling them to pass the law in parliament, which we are still battling with. And we've had a lot of international support, as you can see. But at the same time, that support has come in very many different versions. Sweden threatened to cut aid to Uganda. There we are being told to migrate, go to other countries, the Western countries, because they believe that homosexuality is a Western influence. They believe I'm a homosexual because I'm being paid money. If they get to know that I'm here today, they would think that the Freedom Forum has paid me money to come, learn something to take back home, and teach other people how to be homosexuals. Those are some of the protests taking place in my country. When the president of America came out to strongly condemn the bill in my country, there were lots of protests, yet the Americans are the ones who came to my country three years ago, the religious fundamentalists, and told the parliament of Uganda that homosexuals from the West have come with a gay agenda in Uganda. And so they are going to destroy the traditional family. At the same time, when the president came out, President Obama came out to speak against the law, they also turned against him. They say at the same time it's influence from the West, yet when the West comes out to condemn, people who are supporting Obama in Africa are the ones who began attacking him. Sweden came out to say they're going to cut aid. We know we are trying to look for international support, but cutting aid to Uganda is not the support we need to fight the oppressive laws, 
because homosexuals do not live in a vacuum, we also benefit from this aid. So there's, there's been a backlash from international support that we are out there seeking, even today for me to stand here to share my struggle back home. It's because I want the world to know what is happening and also us to get support. But at the same time, that support needs to also be, you have to, to consider us who are back home facing this because if you come and say you're going to cut aid, you're making us a scapegoat to our country. Now the government is turning against us. They are, back, they are closing all civil society organizations because they feel the aid you're giving them, which you're going to cut from the government, you're going to give it to civil society that are supporting gay rights. So there's also a backlash according to the way you support us. These are some of the protests that are still going on in my country. Yes, I wanted to share with you something that is happening in my country from the last time I was here two years ago. The first time I came here, I'd never spoken in front of really, really a big crowd. And when I went back home, I reflected, I began watching myself on YouTube, speaking at the Oslo Freedom Forum. And that exposed me a lot to international forums, where we've managed to go and speak about our struggle back home. Many people were wondering what I'm doing in a right-wing forum. I told them, for as long as I get opportunity to share my struggle back home, I'll use every fora I get. And since then, I've been moving around the world, talking about the struggle back home. We've managed to get a lot of international support because of this exposure. Many people did not even know that gay rights activists existed in Uganda. And even maybe some people thought there are no homosexuals in Africa or in Uganda. But because of this, this for us like this, we get to share our struggle, we get to get support, we get to meet people. Whoever knew that I would meet the person we are all here to meet today? Many of us are here today because we are struggling in very many ways, but we are all leading to one struggle, to make this world a better place. I'm happy that at least I'm doing something. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I'm not burying my head in the sun, feeling sorry that, well, I'm going to be killed the next day. But I'm happy to be part of the foundation that even if I never live to see the freedom I'm fighting for today, at least I've been part of the foundation for the future generations. Many people in Uganda used to tell me, Kasha, your parents, everyone who knows you, knows you as an out homosexual. What are you dying for? Everyone already knows you. Why are you going around telling the whole world who you are? I told them because there are many people out there who feel that they are alone in this world, who are about to commit suicide because they are being told they are possessed by demons. But every time they see me standing on, in front of the television and speaking out, they know they are not alone. I've received a phone call from a 77-year-old 77 who told me you've answered the question I've been asking myself all my life. Now I can rest in peace. I asked her, what is that question? She said, I used to have these feelings, but I didn't know what it was called. And I used to think I'm possessed by demons. But after seeing you talk on TV and telling us that you even have an organization where there are other people, now I know I'm not alone. And for me, that was enough to see that at least I've answered someone's question. Many people have called and said, I've been excommunicated from my family. I've been sacked from school. Where can I go? I told them, come, you have a family here where we are. I've taken in very many people in my house, people I don't even know. The person I was, I was trying to release yesterday from prison, I just saw it on TV. I didn't know this person. But I said, before I bought that plane, I must be at the police station. And I'm happy that we managed to release him. And one of my colleagues asked him, how do you feel? And he said he was happy. And for us, that was satisfaction to see that at least he knows he's not alone. There are some people who care about him. So I'm really happy that I've been given this opportunity to share my struggle back home. Thank you, so Thank you, the Freedom Forum. And I'm happy to be part of the Foundation of Human Rights. Thank you. <laughs>